contracting states shall take measures to ensure the safety of passengers and crew of an aircraft which is subject to an act of unlawful interference until their journey can be safely continued. Each contracting state responsible for providing air traffic services for an aircraft subject to unlawful interference shall collect all pertinent information on the flight and transmit that information to all other parties likely to become involved in the situation, including the presumed destination of the aircraft. Each contracting state shall provide such assistance as is necessary to an aircraft subjected to unlawful seizure. This shall include the provision of navigation aids, air traffic services and permission to land. Steps should be taken by contracting states to ensure that once landed, an aircraft subject to unlawful seizure shall be detained on the ground unless to do so would risk an overriding responsibility to protect life. The content of other ICAO annexes and documents relate directly to security, and you should be familiar with them. The first is ICAO Annex 2, Rules of the Air, which states the following. An aircraft subject to unlawful interference shall endeavour to notify the appropriate air traffic service unit of this fact in order to enable the Air Traffic Service Unit to minimise conflict with other aircraft. Pilots in command should endeavour to continue with the notified flight plan and fly the assigned tracks headings and airspeeds. Should the aircraft be forced from its assigned flight plan and be unable to communicate with an Air Traffic Service Unit, it should attempt to broadcast a warning on emergency frequencies unless circumstances dictate otherwise and Proceed in accordance with any special procedures for in-flight contingencies where such procedures have been established. If no special procedures exist, fly at 1,000 feet above the normal cruising level wherever 2,000 feet vertical separation is specified or 500 feet above the cruising level wherever 1,000 feet vertical separation is specified. Secondly, the ICAO Annex 6 Part 1 Operation of Aircraft document refers to some aspects of aircraft operational security. Annex 6 states that in all aircraft that have a crew compartment door it shall be capable of being locked from within. An operator shall ensure that there is on board a checklist of the procedures to be followed when searching for a bomb in case of suspected sabotage. It shall detail actions to be taken in the event of finding a device and information on the least risk bomb location specific to the aeroplane. An operator shall establish and maintain a training program which enables crew members to act in the most appropriate manner to minimise the consequences of acts of unlawful interference. Following an act of unlawful interference, the pilot in command shall submit, without delay, a report of such an act to the designated local authority. Specialised means of attenuating and directing the blast of a bomb should be provided for use at the least risk bomb location. When an operator accepts the carriage of weapons removed from passengers, the aeroplane should have provision for stowing such weapons in a place that is inaccessible to any persons in flight. The ICAO Annex 9 refers to facilitation and seeks to relate the needs for strict security and facilitation. Contracting states must ensure that facilities exist that keep security cleared passengers and baggage separated from non-cleared passengers and baggage. States must also provide a secure area for transit passengers to remain and not require them to submit to full immigration procedures whilst temporarily there. The ICAO document 4444 lays down emergency procedures for air traffic control units and, whilst non-specific to allow for full flexibility, 
provides guidelines to individuals who have to deal with such incidents. These are as follows. Should an air traffic control unit believe an aircraft to be in a state of emergency, then it should be given priority over other aircraft. Air traffic services personnel should be prepared to recognize any indication of the occurrence of unlawful interference to aircraft and attempt to verify any suspicion by using SSR codes that may indicate hijack or emergency situations. Whenever unlawful interference with an aircraft is known or suspected, or a bomb threat warning has been received, air traffic service units will promptly attend to all requests by the aircraft and try to anticipate its future needs. This will particularly be the case with the need for impromptu navigational assistance. Air traffic service units shall take such action as is necessary to safely expedite all phases of the flight, transmitting any information pertinent to the safety of the flight, monitor it all the time, and keep all air traffic service units that may become affected by the flight informed of the situation. Annex 14 requires each airport to allocate at least one specified taxiing route to a remote parking position that will keep suspect aircraft at least 100 metres from other aircraft, buildings, fuel installations or public areas. That concludes the lessons on security.